covered with a very particular type of grassland. These are the Southeast African plateaus and mountainsides. This particular type of grassland is known as Welt. In South African language, Welt means field. We can divide Welt into various different kinds. They are high Welt or high plateaus, low Welt or bush clad lowland plains, thorn Welt, and grass Welt. The bush wilt found in the northern part of South Africa is a kind of wilt with a mix of tall grasses and trees. Wilt has a rare collection of wildlife that has made it their home. To the west of wilt lies the world's biggest desert, Kalahari. It has vast areas of dry grassland and large herds of zebras and antelope like gemsparks, wildebeest, springboks and elands are found grazing in herds. And at the slightest sign of danger, this herd runs at an amazing speed, leaving behind a cloud of dust for their predator. Close to the Kalahari Desert is a forest reserve called Valbos. This reserve is home to black riders, white riders, bison, eland, and hearty beasts. Across this desert to the east is the Swine Crater. It is close to Pretoria. This one kilometer circular crater was created some 200,000 years ago when a meteorite crashed into the world. This odd looking little animal is one of the strangest creatures living in the world. It is called the aardvark and in size it is same as that of a pig with large pink ears like donkey. Aardvark has a peculiar way to gulp the insects. It uses its powerful claws to smash open the ant and termite nests and then pokes in its long sticky tongue to pull out the insects. This animal is an expert burrower and can dig hole with an astonishing speed. It can dig a hole big enough for a human being to fall. Among the lush green temperate grasslands, life of animals is a rare tolerance test. It is survival of the fittest for the animals living here. The animals that can survive the harsh climates and can save themselves from their enemies form a valuable treasure of the grassland. Far more burrowing animals have made temperate grasslands their home compared to any of the world's biome. In grassland, all the usual hiding places such as bushes, trees, dense undergrowth, fallen trees or rock piles are not sufficient for animals. Yet, the animals not only adapt to the living conditions but also find a solution to their survival. So, how do they fulfill this shortage of living space? They create their own hiding place beneath the ground. Different types of small rodents such as mice, voles, hamsters, gerbils and large species such as marmots, moles and many more species have a secret world of tunnels and burrows and they add a whole new dimension to the featureless landscape. The simplest shelters are just hollows in the ground where rabbits, hares, ground living birds like quails, partridges live. They create their burrows in no time as grassland soil is perfect for digging. The dense mat of tangled roots does not allow the soil to cave in easily like loose earth or sand. Moles rarely leave their underground shelter tunnels. 
they throw the waste soil up to the surface as mole hills. Burrowing mammals have strong muscular legs and claws to dig the ground. Their compact bodies help them to move, turn and twist in the tunnels, squeezing past awkward roots and stones. Some mammals have special eyelids that stop the flying dirt from getting in their eyes. The pocket gophers of North America have lips behind their front teeth which stop them from swallowing soil. Some mammals have sensitive whiskers on the front of their head. Twitching constantly, the whiskers feel the tunnel walls and pick up the vibrations made by the movement of other animals. The vibrations keep these burrowers informed as to what is happening around them. Animals that cannot dig their own burrows often take over other species' leftover old burrows. Grassland snakes, several rattlesnakes, rat snakes, burrowing owls move into the burrows of prairie dogs and badgers. Living underground allows animals to escape not only their predators but also bad weathers. It offers protection from strong winds, sudden storms, forest fires, scorching summers and freezing winters. Rodents, tortoises, snakes, lizards survive these by entering a deep sleep-like state called hibernation. In this state of hibernation, the body temperature of hibernating animals reduces and breathing and metabolism slows down considerably. They use very little energy and fat reserves which is built and stored during spring and summer. Many animals can be in the state of hibernation for more than six months. Somewhat similar to hibernation is the state of estivation. The amphibians like frogs and toads retreat to their hiding places to avoid dry hot summers. They hide in the creeks and dried pools or wriggle underground to keep their skin moist. A good example of this is the spade foot toe. It uses ridges on its hind feet as shovels to dig mud. Once underground, they shed several layers of skin to make a watertight cocoon around themselves. Once when the summer is over and rain arrives, the toads come out. Unlike reptiles, rodents and amphibians, birds use the power of flight to escape winters or scorching summers. Birds such as bobolink, flamingos fly long distances in search of food and shelter from harsh weather. These birds are called migratory birds. The Arctic Tern migrates from Northern Pole to South Pole in winter and back to North Pole when there is winter in South Pole. Small birds like larks, pipits, buntings, sparrows, finches which feed on insects and seeds gather in flocks and fly for miles in search of food. It is an easy way for food finding as many eyes scan the ground for food. Different species of animals and birds have different ways of surviving. Small animals try to stay out of sight from eagles, hawks and harriers who constantly glide silently above the grass in search of their prey. Snakes use their tongue to taste the air for their prey's scent. While hunter dogs like coyote swift fox, jackals and Australian dingo have excellent sense of smell and sound. Many grassland animals like antelopes, deer, horses, bison, blessed bog, pronghorn antelopes live in herds. 
it is advantageous to stick together with many eyes and ears on a lookout for an approaching enemy the predators then find it difficult to catch animals by surprise the grasslands are able to support such impressive number of animals right from grazing mammals to invertebrates like ants termites beetles grasshoppers and snails the larva of many flies butterflies and moths also feed on grasslands again earthworms also play a vital role in the biome they spend their entire life burrowing through soil and sucking it along with rotten plants thus digesting the plants and throwing out the waste soil in the process improving the quality of the soil stretching across the heart of asia is the vast desolate grassland of steppes they form one of the last great wilderness areas of the earth this region extends from ukraine and russia on the eastern europe through south siberia and kazakhstan to mongolia in northern china it extends as far as turkey iran and iraq in the south covering almost one third of the world many parts of this grassland are not habited the reason for this could be the vastness of this area kyrgyz step is an immense grassy plain reaching from caspian sea in the east to altai mountains in the west this is one of the world's largest areas of dry step grassland different species of animals like marmots, peacocks, saiga, antelopes, Cossack foxes and birds like parrot, harrier are found abundantly in this region. The Altai Mountains stretches from Siberia to the edge of Gobi Desert. This vast land is close to Mongolian plateau and highlands of Tibet. Most of the places are just sand and gravel. and for miles and miles the land is barren due to the desert region only bactrian camels are found here close to the gobi desert is the mongolian plateau population of this region is sparse due to climatic conditions above the mongolian plateau is the lake baikal located in siberia This is world's oldest lake and was formed over 25 million years ago when the water was collected in the deep crack in the earth's surface. It is also the world's deepest lake containing about a fifth of the world's fresh water. It has evolution of the most unique creatures like corygon fish and the baikal seal. If the various animals of the grassland can live in the grassland then the adaptability of human to the temperate grassland is inevitable people have raised crops and livestock in temperate grassland for thousands of years but still it is sometimes difficult for survival about 12000 years ago people began to settle down in small villages established by them in the southern steppes area of Turkey, Iran and Iraq. They grew cereal crops such as barley, oats, rye and wheat. People discovered that seeds of grass made nutritious food which gave lots of energy. Later they learned to grind these wheat seeds into flour for cooking and baking into bread. The oldest stone windmill for grinding wheat dates back to 1400 years earlier than 120 BC. Today, farming has spread throughout the temperate grassland biome. It has world's best pasture croplands. Besides different vegetables, soya bean and corn crops are grown here. Where it is difficult to grow crops, cattle rearing is the allied occupation. Many grassland farms and rice fields are enormous, covering hundreds of miles. Huge harvesting machines along with the team of workers are required to cultivate these farms. 
In the steppes of Mongolia, people however lead a nomadic life. They spend their entire life on move, driving their livestock from place to place in search of fresh pastures. Mongolian herders keep only sheep, goats and yaks as the weather here is extremely unpredictable for farming and the cattle cannot survive the extreme conditions. Yaks are heavier and tougher with shaggy coat that protects them from chilly winds. The tongue of yak is also used by them as fuel. The nomadic herders carry their belongings on the two humped camels known as the Bactrian camels as they are the best means of transport for steep terrain. These nomads camp themselves in tents called girls which are windproof and lightweight. Dating back to around 13th century, one of the Mongolian leader Chenggiz Khan commanded a ferocious force of horseback warriors on the steppes of Central Asia. He conquered all people living between Turkey and China to create an empire that stretched from the Mediterranean to the Pacific. Perhaps he was the greatest empire builder the world had ever seen. In the 19th century, new settlers arrived on the west coast of America. The natives traded rifles and manufactured goods with the new settlers. As more and more settlers arrived, the Native Americans were pushed off their homeland, which led to many armed rebellion against troops of the US government. And finally, in 1890, the last armed rebellion against the US government collapsed. Similar was the plight of Aborigines of Australia. The original inhabitants are called Aboriginals. European settlers in the eastern Australia also pushed native aborigines to dry and barren parts of Australia, capturing the best areas of rangeland. Today, though aborigines have rights as citizens, the rangeland is still cultivated by white European Australians. The temperate grassland biome is very sensitive to changes in weather and climate. When the rains are not enough for forest, the grasses flourish and if the rains fail, the grasses disappear and the land can turn into a desert. Today, to a great extent, the world's temperate grassland biome has been converted by the people living there into artificial grassland with cereal crops being cultivated and harvested on a large scale. Humans have made themselves so much dependent on this productive land that the people living there are more at risk than ever to its unpredictable climate. The year was 1930. The most tragic drought in American history hit the prairies. For five years, there was little rain. The soil was blown away by hot and dry winds and massive clouds of choking dust rose into the sky to a towering height of 6,000 meters, that is 20,000 feet. These gigantic clouds suffocated the birds in mid-air and many people died due to heat stroke and breathing problems. The huge area was converted into a barren wasteland, the Dust Bowl. Thousands of farmers who survived the tragedy took part in one of the biggest human migration ever seen in North America. The rangeland of southeastern Australia is the warmest and driest temperate grassland. It merges into sandy deserts on both its northern and western frontiers. There are more than 700 species of eucalyptus trees all over the rangeland as these trees grow in all conditions. Australia was once a part of other continents 
billions of years, it separated and drifted away from the rest of the world to its new location. The plants and animals here evolved into hundreds of unusual species to be found nowhere else in the world except here. Among them are strange grass trees called black boys. They are named so due to their dark trunk. In spring, their spear-like flower stalks are covered with masses of white flowers. The unique animals of this rangeland are grey kangaroos and emus, the flightless bird which is as tall as a man. Duck-billed platypus is also a unique animal. It is a primitive egg-laying mammal that is venomous, beaver-tailed and otter-footed semi-aquatic mammal. Animals like kangaroos, koala, wallaby and wombat are marsupials. Marsupials are mammals and the female typically has a pouch in which it brings up its young ones in early infancy. The rangeland is also incredibly rich resource for sheep breeding. It is amazing to know that the population of sheep is 10 times the population of people in Australia. Let us look at some of the rangelands that are spread across two states, the New South Wales and Victoria. Close to the stirred desert is the Flinders Ranges. These barren hills are barriers between the rangeland and the scorching desert, which lie in the center of this continent. Going further down south, we come across broken hills where we can find zinc, and lead mines. One of the longest and most important rivers called Murray River flows from Australian Alps towards Adelaide. This river never dries unlike other rivers of Australia. Running across the Alps is the Great Dividing Range. This long range of forested mountain rises out of the lowlands. It divides the inland plains from the Pacific Ocean. Temperate grasslands once covered more than a quarter of Earth's land. Gradually, over a million years, they shrank due to climatic changes on this Earth. Though this grassland still makes one of the biggest land biomes, but the future of temperate grasslands is not as bright as it seems because today people have changed much of the world's temperate grassland to farmland. Billions of people depend on this grassland for food and due to this, the grasslands are turned into fields of crops and pastures putting tremendous pressure on the plants, wildlife and people of temperate grasslands. Many of the flat lands are utilized for building factories, towns and cities along with the railways and motorways to serve as links between them. The natural prairies and pampas have been reduced in size to negligibly 1 or 2% of their original size. The wealths of Africa have also been converted into 70% of farmland. The grassland may look very natural to us, but it could be that they have been transformed. Constant grazing by the cattle, sheep and goats does not allow the vegetation to grow. Many a times it kills many plants and species that bear colorful flowers in the lush green area. Deliberate sowing of different grass seeds and using the grass for grazing animals also spoils the natural look of grassland. Another reason for dwindling original grassland is the torrential downpour and gales which wash away the valuable top layer of soil. This sometimes piles up in strange places. 
in Kansas in USA. A highway department had once to clear almost 1,000 tons of soil and dirt from a stretch of just 500 yards of road. If cleared grassland is left unattended, Soon the turf may get wilder and richer with every passing year and many new types of plants may arrive on the scene. People have been making new grasslands for thousands of years by consuming the trees of another biome and converting them into open lands. These grasslands are entirely artificial. Human activity has immense impact on the grassland plants and animals. Some flora and fauna cannot cope up with the changes in the environment and may become extinct. However, some plants and animals benefit from the change and can survive better. In fact, they do so better in the new surroundings that they become a nuisance. One example of this is the European rabbit, which people took to Australia in 1800 adapted well to its new surroundings and could breed with amazing speed. The warm grasslands of Australia suited them so well that they are almost a billion in population today. Keeping the future in mind, some of the surviving patches of natural grassland in North America are now protected as reserves or national parks. Many biologists hope to reintroduce some of the animal species that once dominated this region. Tule elks and pronghorns have been reintroduced to California's Central Valley grasslands and gray wolves and bison in the Yellowstone National Park. In Australia and North America, flocks of emus and ostriches are preserved for their low-fat meat, giant eggs and fluffy feathers. They are ideal for farming and easy to maintain. Similarly, African welt antelopes are well preserved. Looking into the years to come, the future of temperate grassland doesn't appear to be bright. Almost the entire biome is put to the severe test of extinction. Many rich areas of plants are becoming rare and increasingly endangered. There are some steps which could be taken to reduce the damage. Seeds of rare plants should be stored properly for sprouting in future. The seed bank should be properly maintained for future use. As we never know, these very plants might turn out to produce life-saving medicines along with new breed of crops. The temperate grassland can be a valuable saving for humans as well as animals because this biome has the capacity to be a marvelous resource for leisure, farming and for growing industry. The only condition is plan ahead and treat them wisely.